Hello, and welcome to another video about linear algebra. My name is Patrick Naylor, and I'm one of the instructors for Math 235, along with Graham Turner. In this video, I'd like to discuss vector spaces over different scalar fields, and some of the differences between vector spaces over R and vector spaces over C. This has to do with sections 11.1 to 11.3 in the textbook. So, Here's a definition that you may or may not have seen before. A field, F, is a set together with two operations, addition and multiplication, that satisfy the axioms in theorem 11.1.2. Well, what are these axioms? They're the properties that the complex numbers satisfy. However, these axioms are also satisfied by other sets of numbers, for instance, the real numbers or the rational numbers. The important highlights are that the field is closed under addition and multiplication, both operations are commutative and associative, and we have inverses, both additively and multiplicatively. Well, let's just clean this up to make it apply to any field. Ah, that's better. The textbook is actually missing one axiom, and that's that the product of two complex numbers is still a complex number. So. What are some examples of fields, you ask? It turns out that you know a lot of them already. The real numbers are a field, as are the complex numbers, and the set of rational numbers. In fact, the integers modulo a prime p also form a field, but in this case, there are only finitely many elements. You may remember this from Math 135. If you haven't seen this before, take the time to check that each of these satisfies the axioms of a field. Why do we care about fields? Well, anytime we have a field, it makes sense to talk about vector spaces over that field. A vector space over a field is just something that satisfies the same axioms as usual, but with a different scalar field in place of R, which is what we've been using so far. If you look at the definition of a complex vector space in section 11.2, you'll see that it has all of the same axioms, but with the complex numbers instead of the real numbers. In general, that definition makes sense with respect to any field. However, in Math 235, we'll only consider vector spaces over the real and complex numbers. So, why would we care about this? Let's note something interesting. The complex numbers are a vector space over both the complex numbers and the real numbers. I'm not going to check this here, but you should check it for yourself. In other words, if we talk about the complex numbers as a vector space, the same way that we talk about the real numbers as a vector space, we need to specify what scalar field we're using. As a quick example for why this would matter, let's think about the complex numbers as a vector space over C. This vector space is one dimensional, and a basis over C is just the set consisting of the single element, one. You should check this if you don't believe me. However, if we think about the complex numbers as a vector space over the real numbers, we can no longer use the same basis since we're not allowed to multiply by complex numbers anymore. In this case, I claim that a basis for C over R is the set consisting of the elements 1 and I. Why is this? Well, consider a dependence relation of the form a times 1 plus b times i is equal to 0, where a and b are both real numbers. By definition of a complex number, this means that a and b must both be 0. In other words, 1 and i are linearly independent elements over r. They also form a spanning set for c, which means that this is a basis. However, it's very important to note that these two elements are not linearly independent when we think of C as a vector space over C. Pause the video and write down a dependence relation which shows this to make sure that you're following along. What can we take away from this discussion? Well, notice that the dimension of C as a vector space over R is 2, and the dimension of C as a vector space over C is just 1. Again, when we write the dimension of a vector space, we now have to be careful, and so we'll use subscripts to indicate 
which scalar field we're working with. In particular, note that as vector spaces over R, this means that C is isomorphic to R2. In fact, more generally, the dimension of C to the N as a vector space over R is 2 times N, and C to the N is isomorphic to R to the 2N as vector spaces over R. In fact, this is something you're asked to prove on assignment 10. Even more generally, if V is a finite dimensional vector space over C, then it's also a vector space over R, and its dimension over R is twice the dimension over C. If you finish assignment 10 early, see if you can prove this for yourself. As a fun and perhaps quite difficult problem, think about the real numbers considered as a vector space over the rational numbers. What does this vector space look like? Can you write down a basis? What is the dimension of this vector space over Q? All right, the last note for today is the following. I want to summarize some important differences between real matrices and complex matrices, since we're going to be working with both in this chapter. The important differences have to do with eigenvalues. If A is a complex matrix, then A has complex eigenvalues. Indeed, we can always just write down the characteristic polynomial and find the eigenvalues, and in general, they'll be complex numbers. However, if A is a real matrix, then in general, A also has complex eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are sometimes real, but not always. In general, without extra conditions, a real matrix may have complex eigenvalues. Try to write down an example of a real matrix that has only complex eigenvalues. If A is a real matrix, and lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then lambda bar, the conjugate of lambda, is also an eigenvalue of A. This is theorem 11.3.1, and it's very useful. In other words, the complex eigenvalues of real matrices come in complex conjugate pairs. However, something very important to keep in mind here is that if A is a complex matrix, this is no longer true. For example, consider the matrix I've written here. It's diagonal, so its eigenvalues are 1 and i. However, the conjugate of i, which is minus i, is not an eigenvalue. It's very easy to make this mistake, so make sure that you know whether your matrix has real or complex entries. Well, that's all for now. Study hard, and good luck.